Good morning, everyone. Uh, I picked up a 135 border cake uh, that at the time was uh, kind of new. I was looking up videos on uh, reviews or builds or anything like that. Couldn't find any. Uh, so I figured I'd take a bunch of pictures um, and kind of see if I could help anybody out who's on the fence about it. Uh, I don't know if fancy recording equipment or any of that. So uh, I did the best we could. Kind of got a little bit of a slideshow for you. So hopefully this helps somebody uh, and you can ask any questions uh, that you may have about it and I'll put out an answer for you. Just kind of make a plan of uh, what I was going to build. This is the one that I'm going to go for. Um, it's, uh, if I remember right, it's a Pearl Harbor aircraft. Um, and now kind of my plan with this one, I just recently done a VAL. The VAL was uh, also a Pearl Harbor aircraft and kind of the same more or less paint scheme uh, with the green over gray uh, and the red tail. So what I didn't want is for them to be on display right next to each other each other and kind of looking identical. Uh, so the bow was super clean, uh, you know, Pearl Harbor beginning of the war. Everything is probably in pretty good condition at that point. Um, so I decided to kind of take a little bit of artistic liberty on this one, make it a little bit dirtier, even if it's not completely accurate for what it would have been. Um, I just didn't want them looking identical, uh, sitting next to each other. So uh, vary it up a little bit. Uh, plus, weathering is way more fun anyways. Here's a quick look at the VAL. Uh, this is the 132 Infinity Models kit. Um, absolute nightmare of a kit. Uh, I had the 132 Helldiver as well. And as soon as I finished this one, I immediately sold that other kit. I did not want to touch another uh, from that brand, at least until they got some stuff figured out. There's all kinds of fit issues, all kinds of filling and... Uh, warped parts, stuff that just completely misaligned. The details are really, really nice in the box, um, but that's about where it stops. It was, it was rough. Um, but as you can tell, they're gonna kind of look pretty similar as far as the paint goes. So that's why I wanted to vary it up a little bit, uh, and hopefully at the end you'll kind of see uh, that they're just different enough. Now I'm not gonna go uh, piece by piece uh, and kind of show you me cutting it out, sanding it gluing it, all that type of stuff. Um, but just kind of hit the wave tops of it all. So this is a cockpit, everything going together. Uh, there's a lot of small pieces in here. Um, so in order to not paint and then mess stuff up uh, by trying to glue it, uh, I glued it all together and then I'll just hit it with the airbrush uh, and then pick out any details as I go. Uh, I figure that's going to be the easiest way to do it. And it worked out pretty well in the end. I'll say it now, you'll probably hear me say it again. Um, references were really hard to come by uh, for this point. Um, there's, I think, like one in existence or something like that, um, and it's restored. And then apparently the restored people have the same type of issues with not knowing what color to paint stuff uh, because everything is so deteriorated. Um, so check your references the best that you can. Um, this is the best I could do with uh, the dashboard. Uh, kind of went with just like a basic black, picked out some of the bezels and different colors, and just made it look like a thing. And then I dry brushed it a little bit, uh, and I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, there's the clear gauges, and uh, I'm trying to remember, I think there's a decal that went behind it. Um, but whatever it was, uh, I did it pretty much right out of the kit, and it worked very well. Uh, I, I think it looks pretty realistic, uh, especially in the scale. Blasted through some more uh, cockpit pictures. Uh, this is kind of like everything together. It wasn't completely done weathering and all that yet, uh, but this is everything more or less in place. A little bit closer to done, uh, just kind of a different view. Uh, once the seat belts and all that got put on, uh, the kit came with photo etch seat belts, uh, which worked well enough. I'm not a huge fan of photo etch seat belts, but uh, they still look pretty good. So. Here's the two fuselage halves. Uh, I tried to do the outer wall a little bit darker than the ribs. The ribs were a separate piece. Um, so it allows you to add kind of like a little bit of depth, if you want to call it that. Um, just break up some of the monotony of just green, you know. Um, so I was pretty happy with the way that it came out, and especially once it goes back together. I couldn't get a picture like down in the, uh, uh, the fuselage well enough to see uh, what it looks like, but when you're Checking with your, uh, you know, Mark One eyeballs. It looks good enough. 
There's some more once the fuselage has got put in. There you can see uh, the decal uh, for the instrument panel. I wasn't 100% sure what to do with it. So trumpeter, when they have the clear parts for the gauges, uh, the decal is reversed. So like when you put it in the water and you slide it on, the gauges are on the bottom side, the adhesive side, not the top side that you're looking at. This is not like that. So if you put it in the water and you slide it on, all your gauges are going to not line up with the holes and they're going to be flipped over. So I just cut it out of the uh, decal paper and I think I used uh, CA glue, white glue. Uh, that's not CA glue, Elmer's glue, the cheap stuff. Uh, just glued it on there so that you could see the gauges. It worked really well. Uh, it stayed, it's probably still there now. So that's a win. Um, but yeah, that was a little bit of a weird tricky one. I'm not 100% sure if that was the intent. Uh, the instructions didn't say anything about it. It was just kind of there. So um, it worked. Try that. There you can see from the front side, there's your gauges. Gauges look good. Uh, and you can't see any of the paper. So win win. Uh, there's a lot going on in this picture. Um, so the top, as you can see, going from this guy, uh, there's no seam across the top. It kind of has its own piece that goes over the top that stops um, the big fuselage joint. And it puts that line down uh, a panel seam. So good and bad there. Um, you cannot sand this plane uh, because of all of the rivets, the stress skin, all that other type of stuff. Um, you just can't you'll lose everything. The rivets are raised. Uh, it's going to be so much work to put it back. So I did the best I could putting it in. And then I used uh, Mr. Surfacer 500 to fill in the gap to at least make it more of a panel line. There's a little bit of a gap. They did a really good job engineering it. But when you put so many pieces together, there's inevitably going to be some kind of fit issues somewhere. So something with the cockpit didn't go in as tight as it probably should have. Um, and it left a little bit of a gap. So I put Mr. Servicer 500 in there and then I cleaned it with something and that's kind of what the staining is there. Uh, now, if you look at the wing, um, they built it with the ability to have a folded wing, um, which is nice, but the downside of this is it always leaves some fit issues when you're making it a straight wing. That's the same with open engine cowlings and stuff like that. They're usually designed to be open uh, and you try and fold them or close them uh, there's just kind of like problems with the lines. You can kind of see the intricate edge on the um, the folded wing. Uh, and there's like building it this way. I had to pick. I could either do the wings together and then glue the wings on, or I could do the inner halves and then get a good wing root seal and then mess with the wing later. I decided to do it that way uh, so that I could get a real tight seal on the wing root, which I think is uh, kind of the more the focal point. Here you can see another one of these gaps uh, and kind of the process that I was doing with it. The leading edge is separate as well um, to get rid of that seam line on the front. Uh, like I said, the engineering, I think, is intentional to get rid of uh, those unnatural seams so that you do not have to sand the detail away, but it just does leave some uh, pretty wide gaps. So that's a Mr. Surfacer 500 as I'm slowly putting it on and then I'll uh, clean off the excess. I don't remember what product I use, but I'm sure we can do that. Here you can see the wings are on. Um, it works pretty well. It's supposed to be a wing fold anyway, so there's supposed to be a little bit of a gap, so you can kind of tell that that's there. Um, but yeah, it went pretty well. There's different parts for uh, the hinge. Um, the hinge for the right wing got launched into the carpet somewhere, uh, so I had to make a new one uh, out of the hinge for the folded wing, but it worked well enough. Just some. Uh, styrene rod uh, cut up, but worked good. Now I'm trying to get like lighting at a different angle so you can start to see some of the effects of that stretch skin and it really, really does look good. Um, so that's the uh, the benefit of these new border model kits. It's kind of weird scale being a 135. It doesn't really go with much of the other aircraft collections, you know, um, but I think worth doing on its own. Uh, it's close enough to 132nd, you can display this stuff together. Uh, and the kits really do go well together and they look really good when they're done. 
there's some more of that from the underside, just as stuff's going, taking pictures. But uh, the control surfaces uh, are all kind of hinged simply, uh, rather than like the trumpeter where it's got like the photo etch rod or the photo etch hinges with the uh, metal rods and stuff like that. Um, it just kind of works pretty well. More pictures of the same. Here it's all primed up, so you can just kind of see like the unification of it all. I still got some areas to clean up, uh, but yeah, you can just kind of see the the stress skin and how it looks uh, after those gaps have been filled. Here's the engine. Uh, be careful with the engine. It's a million and one pieces, and for much of it, as much of it is seen, uh, I think it was kind of over-engineered on this one. Um, so each of the rockers you have to glue on, and the rockers are your alignment pins for the engine to go inside of that nacelle. Um, it's very complicated, and to be completely honest, I think the instructions are wrong. Um, as I had to clip some of them after I put them together. So that may have been user error, or it may have been the alignment pins uh, were instructed in the wrong spot. So I had to fiddle with that a little bit, but uh, it ended up looking pretty good. Uh, I was happy with it. Uh, the only thing I probably could have added was some spark plug wires, but that was straight out of the box as it is, and uh, definitely pretty happy. Once again, couldn't find any references, but that's good enough. Uh, the prop. So here's another uh, point to check your references. Um, quick looking, everything looked to be the same colors as the valve, so I intended on doing that. I think I had the Mr. P paints, MRP, whatever they are. Um, I did it, and then I don't remember if I looked at it and I thought it was wrong, or someone told me, or whatever it was, but steered me away. I realized this was done wrong, so I did more reference uh, searching, I guess. Uh, found the bottom is more of a gray rather than the uh, that tan kind of color that's on the bottom of the valve. So I think I just mixed this one up so I could get something on the plane. Um, but very happy with the way that it turned out. Because of the stress skin, uh, I was really nervous about putting the decals down. There's decals for all this stuff. Um, for the red meatballs and the lines on the bottom here. Um, but with the rivets and the stress skin, I thought that painting it would be a much cleaner look. So that's kind of what I went for here uh, with most of this stuff to include the stripe around the tail. Uh, the circles are easy enough. I just used some extra masks that I had left over from some other project. There's everything painted. Um, obviously, you just got to clean it up a little bit. Really happy with how it looked, though. Uh, that red stripe down the middle had white on either side. Cleaned up. Looks really good. Really happy with it. Uh, and there's a strip as well. I used uh, a primer for this. These are the walkways. Uh, I know some people use textured like paints and stuff like that, but um, this is kind of, it's just a primer that if you spray it for far enough back, it dries on the way in, it comes off kind of clumpy, so it works out um, as like an anti-slip kind of thing. So this was weird, the horizontal stabs, as you put them in, the pin for the elevator and the stab is not in a line, so you cannot just push it in. Uh, so I ended up having to clip that pin off, uh, but it's still, you couldn't really tell. That just means you have to glue the elevator on, it's a movable surface. You gotta glue it, but it's fine. That one decal uh, is kind of showing what I was worried about. Uh, but it settled down pretty well over the top of the rivets. Um, I intended on painting it, but it had some curved surfaces and stuff like that that I thought would just be easier to put the decal down, or at least I'd try. Um, I tried. Here it is. It looks pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with it uh, as it sits now. Uh, light's kind of in the way, but you can see uh, how it settled in. And I've started to do some weathering. Uh, everything's kind of cleaned up, just kind of getting the the big oily spots down, um, and then I'll seal that in and then wash uh, everything after that. So my screen recorder times out in 15 minutes. I rambled on and what I was going to.
Um, so this is either going to be a part two video, or I'm going to figure out how to be from work and I'll join them together and just make it a longer one video, which is the goal. But I'm just all right, now that uh, all the oil weathering is drying on uh, the plane, it started to work on this torpedo. Uh, the kit comes with a regular standard torpedo and the Pearl Harbor version that had the wood on the back of it. Um, so that's what we went with on this. I uh, was kind of excited to make it try and look like wood, at least. Um, they did a pretty good job of uh, molding it in a bunch of different pieces in the back so that all of these fins uh, kind of went in well. It was a pretty complex shape at the back, uh, and it ended up being, I don't know, 10 or 15 pieces or something like that. So uh, it's a lot, but it looked good. Yeah. Regular torpedo is just silver with a black on the front, and you can kind of see the back here. Um, so what I did is I taped up and I airbrushed a lighter red-brown kind of color uh, for the base of the wood, and that was... Uh, to me, a paint, I think. Uh, so just an acrylic. And once I dried, I went in with a darker brown oil paint, uh, left it pretty thick, and I used a beat up brush, and I kind of just did streaks along it. Um, I, the streaks were kind of heavy, uh, so then you get a different brush, put a little bit of thinner on it, and then run it by, and it streaks it all the way down pretty well, and you get uh, kind of this wood grain here uh it's not perfect but i think uh for the scale it looks well enough like wood um and i was definitely happy with it and then i just went in afterwards picked out uh highlights with the brass called it good all right now is always the terrifying part you put all the work in and then uh you go and you smother it in uh a wash so this is just uh, a wash that I made out of cheap uh, Hobby Lobby, that's the name of the place, Hobby Lobby oil paints. Um, just thinned it down real heavily, just a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, uh, kind of mix it together, um, throw it all over the thing, uh, leave it a few minutes to dry, uh, and then you just wipe, uh, wipe it all off. So you can see it covered there. Uh, I did mess up an Avenger like this one time. Um, but that's when I was still in the experimenting stage. Uh, ended up having to repaint the whole thing. It was miserable to get that far and have to start over. But as you can see, this one kind of worked out. So there's the bottom of it, one of the wing cleaned up. Uh, at least partially, I got the big chunks off. And then I'll come in with the Q-tip later and kind of get the uh, the nooks and crannies uh, to die down just a little bit more. But yeah, it's uh, working out nicely there. More of the same. You can still see some of the uh, the weathering under the engine uh, below that. I'll have to go back, touch it up a little bit more. We did lose a little bit of it, even though it was sealed, but uh, it probably just wasn't sealed well enough. There's a uh, glass. Uh, there's kind of two parts on this picture. It's trying to show you how clear that glass is. Um, and just the, the texturing and the weathering that I was going with there. Um, when I do like canopies like this, silver colored pencil is the way to go. Like all this expensive modeling stuff, uh, and the colored pencil is the trick. Um, so yeah, make sure you have one of those in your little arsenal. Uh, it'll go a long way for you. Here, pretty much everything is together. Um, just a couple things left. Finishing touches. Obviously, I throw the prop on. I usually do that very last. Uh, it just gets in the way for everything else. Um, but yeah, just a couple smaller things. It's kind of zoomed in. Uh, I use combination of um, some dry brushing with the silver, like you can see over the rivets a little bit, uh, as well as that colored pencil. Um, then I'm just gonna like paint exhaust stacks and kind of do the the smoke from there. A little bit of zoom in, so it's kind of grainy a little bit but i think you get the point well enough colored pencil once again money and here we go follow reveal here's the whole thing put together uh once again as you can tell the vowel at the very beginning of uh the video it very very similar like i don't know you show someone who doesn't know planes and they're the same thing so 
Uh, this is just different enough that it doesn't look the same, uh, largely with the paint. But yeah, definitely happy with the way that it turned out. So uh, without further ado, I'll just stop talking and we'll cut through some of these videos. There you have it. There's the whole, uh, you know, write up thing on it. Um, if you got questions about it, let me know. Uh, I built this probably about six months ago um, and have just been lazy trying to make a video. So here we go. Um, but I probably remember enough about it to answer questions if you got anything. Um, I've got more pictures and more description of stuff like that on my Instagram. I'll put that in the little comment thingy down below um so yeah just let me know uh if you got anything i'll help out the best that i can uh other than that happy modeling